I got a single person in part one with courteous uh, we're heading away from the theme park, moving deep into the heart of a real working studio where some of Hollywood's biggest names come and work every single day. Once again, my name is Paul. I'm going to be your guide on this beautiful Los Angeles afternoon. I am, however, not driving this vehicle. I'm sitting backwards. That'd be a horrible idea. But we do have a driver. He's the best in the biz. His name is Titus. Let's give it up for Titus. Hey! Without Titus, we'd be sitting on that load line for an hour. That would be a horrible tour. Let's hope this one's a little better than that. We've also got a co-host on today's tour. You may recognize him as the host of the Night Show starring Jimmy Fallon. It is, of course, Jimmy Fallon. Oh, hey there. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy. Paul. Oh. And the great show. Titus. You're the best. I love that. Even though Titus, <laughs> five bucks. Right. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. Right, Jimmy, we've got a few safety rules to go over real quick. First and foremost, if you have any emergencies of any kind, medical emergency, drop anything over the side of the tram, audio or visual problems, reach up, pull the red cord running down the center of the tram ceiling, they'll be back to assist just as soon as it's safe to do so. Though a note about dropped items. There are several areas on the tour where I'm not allowed to get off the vehicle. If you happen to drop your items in one of those several areas, you're not going to get it back until the very end of the night if they're able to retrieve the item and get it back to you at all. So, good rule of thumb, just hang tightly onto all of your belongings so you don't drop it. Remain seated for the entire tour, keeping your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. Going to be a lot of movement on the tour today. There's going to be several fire effects. Be aware of those. We're also going to have some water effects. While there are several great photo opportunities on the tour, keep an eye on those cameras to make sure they stay dry. No smoking anywhere on the tour and no selfie sticks. That does it for the safety rules. Now we're heading down the timeline. Look out either side of the tram. You're going to see a number of movie posters representing just a few of the thousands of movies that we've made here over the years. We've got a fire station coming up off to the right. Fire station 51. Those are real emergency vehicles right there. We function like our own little city here at Universal. We have anything that an actual city needs to operate. Sheriff's office, gas stations, DMV, post office, dry cleaner. The only thing we don't have that an actual city has are residents. We don't have people that actually live here. But we can take care of anything that may occur so we don't have to rely on the surrounding city's resources. So the main thing we do here is make movies and TV shows. And a majority of our filming happens inside great big buildings called sound stages. The first sound stage you're going to see is just off to the left hand side. Sound stage number uh, one of our largest it's, uh, sound stages, also our biggest sound stage. Typically it's where we film end of season TV um, competition series The Voice. But they've been temporarily relocated to another stage for season 21. But that is where some of the largest sets ever created have been built. So we used to go down. I don't know. People looking at your screens now. You can see what a soundstage looks like on the inside before they build any sets. It essentially, looks like a huge soundproof warehouse. Up the left hand side, you're going to see some other sound stages with their doors cracked open. You can peek inside and see what it looks like. This is all for the nighttime stuff. Two stages next to us, stages 16 and 17, off of the last two stages right there. We're going to be saved by the bell. Before saved by the bell, we'll be able to go sound stages and we'll be super cool. You know, the heat makes us small. Superstore as well as Saved by the Bell. We'll film at stage 21, just past these trucks off to the left hand side. And before either of those shows filmed there, that was the home to the mini project. You're going to hear a lot of TV shows mentioned on the tour because we have a lot of stations under our NBC Universal umbrella like E, Sci Fi, USA, Bravo, Telemundo, CNBC, MSNBC, the Golf Channel, the Weather Channel, and many others. Yeah. Got to say, I think this is the bumpiest. Let me get some of your shorts. Got to see some more sound stages coming up. 
up off to the right hand side. Stage 41 is going to be the first one right over here. Stages 41, 42, 43, and 44 were all used for all six years of the hit show Parenthood, starring Craig T. Nelson, Peter Krause, and Monica Potter. Craig T. Nelson is very familiar with the backup and the sound stages. And stage 43 is also where they go with the sitcom coach. Stage 42 is where they go the interiors for Mr. Mayor. Sorry, Ted Danson, that's the show that's filming on the Metro set right now that we're going to be quiet for in just a minute. Bit. Stage 43, that's where they filmed the first couple seasons of Good Girls before they relocated into one of our newer sound stages. And stages 43 and 44 are two of the sound stages where they filmed most of the interiors for The Good Place, starring Kristen Bell and Ted Danson. We're actually going to see where they filmed the exteriors for The Good Place a little later in the tour. Container because building. Because Little Europe is still dressed up for The Good Place, even though they've wrapped up the series. That is so really we'll cool. drive through, through there a little bit later. You can see some trailers off the right hand side. Trailers are what dressing rooms look like today. Take a look off to the left hand side to see what dressing rooms used to look like. All of these production bungalows used to be dressing rooms for some of Hollywood's biggest stars like Rock Hudson, Jimmy Stewart, Doris Day, Lucille Ball. All of our actors used to be called contract players, which meant they'd sign a contract with one studio for a predetermined amount of films. They couldn't be released from the contract until they made every film on set contract. Which is why dressing rooms used to be a little more perfect. It's kind of a harder way to tell the actors who wouldn't be allowed to go to another studio until they finish up the contract. Today, actors have more freedom to bounce back and forth between studios, which is why dressing rooms are now trailers. They can take back and forth with them. Since then, all of these have been converted into offices. Some of the top writers, directors, and producers are working in the mouth. Some of these offices belong to Warner Rock, Johnson, Mark Platt, Elizabeth Banks. We're about to pass the most famous office that we have, Bungalow 5195. That one used to belong to Sir Alfred Hitchcock. Now we are nearing our metro set, so I'm going to be hopping off mic for just a few moments to not interfere with their production. For everyone, hang tight. I'll be back to talk some more about what these two videos and later. struggling to get up this tiny little hill back there.
sometimes. Thanks for your patience during that quiet zone. We got some pitcher cars off to the left hand side. Sounds like you're able to read all those signs out loud. Notice some empty dinosaur cages. Should probably warn you, some of our dinosaurs have gotten out. They've been harassing some of our guests all day. Uh, that was they worse. Are yeah, it was. It's kind of cold. Right, yeah, right. Just give it a minute to wipe it off. Just give it a minute. I got my arm. Here's that mobile lab unit. Oh, look at this cool guy. World I was just telling you about. create those weather effects ourselves. We're going to give you an exact weather demonstration for how we would do that. We would have strobe lights to simulate lightning. We'd have sound effects for thunder and the most important element in a rainstorm. Of course, the rain. We create a very sophisticated piece of technology called a sprinkler. You stick it at the top of a pole, shoot the water up, falls back down. Looks like rain. But rain is sometimes difficult to capture on film. Sometimes it's too clear or too small or falling too fast. So with these sprinklers, we can control the size of the raindrop. We can make them about four times fatter than a real raindrop. Uh, and sometimes we can add condensed milk or ink into the water mixture so that it's more opaque, so that it appears better on film, or we'll backlight it. But uh, sometimes we leave all our water effects on a little too long with the stuff for the repercussions. Get your actors in some period appropriate cowboy costumes. You have yourself some pretty good little western town right here.
maybe. Oh yeah, when the cargo, and cycle when the cargo's down in there. Yeah, that's the right. The left-hand side, we have a peaceful little lagoon, and that was not quite so peaceful back in the 1950s. This is the original black lagoon. This is the original black lagoon. I was just telling you guys that. Creature from the Black Lagoon is far from the only monster movie that we made here over the years. In fact, our monster movies are the movies that really put us on the map in the studio. Frankenstein, Dracula, The Mummy, The Wolfman, and all of them filmed right over here in Little Europe. I'll tell you more about those in just a moment, but you can see this sign here that says, Welcome to the Good Place. This is where they filmed most of the exteriors for that hit show. This area, maybe, I don't know. That's what happens when it's three or four years in between visits. But as I mentioned, this was the home to all of our classic Universal Monster movies that filmed here. Here's what these sets look like when we used them most frequently in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Private VIP tour, maybe? musicians and celebrity chefs plus amazing diys fun fashions and so much more make sure to watch home and family on hallmark channel every weekend we're now entering into a hot set what a hot set is is any set that's ready for filming if you look around as we get in here you're going to see some equipment there's the film a big bunch of special effects the band casting crew of all that Supposed to be, uh, this is a special effects sound stage. We've been given work with special effects have been deactivated for the time being. The switch they can be incredibly dangerous. The trained professionals are allowed to bring those going off. Days to film even longer days together. 
the final result might just be worth it. As you see from an episode of the show called Bones, if you're right inside that sound stage. She's for water. We're going back to Emily Island. Now, I don't want you folks to worry because they've kept the down. shark that's been terrorizing the community. He struck up just off the right. I thought he'd be a little bigger than that. He's not going to hurt anyone else. Make sure it's safe for everyone to go swimming again. In fact, it could be. Oh, my goodness. Folks, I don't like the look at this. That dorsal fin is huge. It's heading right for my friend George. Hey, George, get out of the water. You got the rock shark. Oh my gosh. Look at all that blood. That is terrible, folks. Not I'm hurting right now, George. One of my good friends, but we have to save ourselves now, so we're going to come over here to the high behind these flammable gas tanks. I'm sure we'll be safe there. Okay. Yeah, that Picture cars around. You're riding in right now. This is 
the world famous Universal Studios tour, these trams are recognized all over the world and what they represent. They've also had their fair share of cameos and movies and TV shows as well. sets ever created. This is the plane crash set from Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. We're going to bring up Rick Carter, the production designer from the scene, as well as Mr. Spielberg. Tell us a little more about how and why they created this awesome set. It's just something you don't see. You don't do it. If you can do it, it doesn't mean. Listen to me. Listen to me. Close your eyes, okay? Stand close. Mm -hmm. Bobby, get in. We have a lot of stuff covered up for today. Mm -hmm. Get in. Yes. 
right, don't move. Bam, that's right, party's over. You know how long I took the iron and shit, man? I'm, I'm not. You're under arrest right now. Thanks, let's, let's back up a little bit. Okay. It's like that. First of all, I don't work for you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. Cop, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Hobbs, escort this guy on this house. Let's go, Cookie Puss! That ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family protects you. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just I'm gonna go to the sky. Call you back. What's on vibrate? Show trace does. I just can't hold forever. Buddy, Roman, we're up. Driver, move that vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. My Mona Lisa's all warmed up right next door. <laughs>